Welcome to Success in Business, where entrepreneurs come together to share their nuggets of wisdom with you. Daniel is an award-winning keynote speaker, business coach, executive coach, corporate trainer, and an international best-selling author. Daniel speaks and coaches at events all over the world. His passion is to elevate businesses and entrepreneurs to elevate their true potential through their training and coaching programs. Daniel has empowered his clients to achieve epic success in their personal and professional lives. Daniel's high energy and ability to unlock untapped potential in people has made him a highly sought out keynote speaker and corporate trainer for top organizations, including the U.S. Air Force. He and his wife believe in giving back and supporting women whose lives have been impacted by breast cancer. Daniel is a true professional and is so easy to work with. Welcome to the show, Daniel Gomez. We're so happy to have you. Stacy, I tell you what, I ate my Wheaties today just to be here with you. I'm excited. I'm pumped up. And thank you so much for having me here. Success in business. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. I've been so excited. We've had this planned for a while. And so I'm so excited. It's today who we're doing this. Yeah. So, well, you know, you're a rock star and I know we, um, you've been booked and, but I'll tell you what, it's been worth the wait. And I just see all, everything you're doing. And first of all, I just want to acknowledge you for your amazing content you put out and for really just caring about people in business. Cause when you care about people in business, it brings you more quality people to take care of. Mm -hmm. Very good. I agree with that so much. Yes, it does. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So we can just jump in with our first question. So I would love to hear how you got started in coaching. Like what's your background and when did you get started? Sometimes you don't realize what you know. I think so many times for me, you look back at where I came from. I was in the automotive industry for almost 20 years, had over 100 employees. And this is the thing. When I went to go get my certification as a speaker through JMT, I didn't realize that there was a lane called coaching. They said, well, you got to go through this program. It's part of what you paid for. And um, I'm like, well, what's a coach? <laughs> True story. <laughs> so, so we go to these trainings where they're pretty much a couple of days. And then next thing you know, it's like, I'm listening to what they're saying. I'm like, I do this. I've done this. So having 100 employees, right? You mentor them. You coach them. But also when we were younger, me and my wife would do a life group, right? So we would lead a group at our church. And I just said, it all connected. And I say that to your audience because so many times we undervalue what we've done before. When in reality, it's a preparation to where we're at right now in this moment. It was meant to happen. It was, we were meant to be here. So when all the dots connected, I'm like, wow, I embrace the identity of a coach. I share that because so many coaches they don't embrace the identity of a business coach. I didn't see myself one. I didn't feel comfortable. I felt like uh, embarrassed about it. But now that, right, I'm one of the top business coaches here in South Texas, I love it. And that's when my journey started really was when I ran businesses because I was, I was getting my rips and for almost 13 years, having 100 employees. And little did I know that all the wisdom I needed, I just tapped back into it when, what did I do before? And I love it because I know more than, right? We, we know more than we realize or give ourselves credit for us, uh, Stacey. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I agree with that sentiment so much. When we're really good at something, it becomes so easy. We don't really need to think about it. So if it's so easy and we don't really have to think about it, we don't realize how much we have to offer. And I love that you've stepped into that. That's so powerful. Yeah. Well, you know, one, one thing I think when it came to me and I really started branding myself and being that business coach. My business took off because people relate to you of how you see yourself. If you don't see yourself as a business coach, you're never going to attract a, a business coaching client. And I, and, and we coach so many people along the way. And it's amazing how many people they, they're like, well, I don't know what that doesn't sound right. And it's like, no, yeah, this is a, this is a block many coaches have as we coach young entrepreneurs, small businesses through this, they still relate to the old identity of who they are. I said, you got to cut off the roots. If you don't kill off that old identity, you're never going to become the life coach, the business coach, the branding coach, whatever coach you want to be, or just, right? If it's a small business, you're never going to become a successful business owner as a financial, uh, financial planner or an insurance broker, whatever it is for you, even a cookie maker. You're never, your bakery's never going to take off because you're going to see yourself as that employee that you were in that old identity, and you got to cut it, kill it at the root. <laughs> nice. I love it. Cut off those old roots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very visual. Yes. You're someone new. You have a new identity. That's fascinating. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. So now I want to hear your advice. What do you think 
is your advice to give someone who's just starting out, who's like thinking about being a coach, what advice would you give to them? I would think about this. This is, this is, this is a mindset you got to do from the beginning is don't see yourself starting off at ground zero as a coach. Like I mentioned, right. All the, I've had over, I had over 30 years, almost running businesses, running organizations, the last 20 were in the automotive. So I came with an experience. So, so many times we undervalue ourselves because we think like, man, I spent 10 years in this industry. I spent 20 years in this industry. I'm starting back off at zero. No, you're not. You're, you're, you're not coming in here. You're coming in here. And you got to mentally see that picture because you bring more value to the table than you think you do. And so many times since you, you, you your, your mindset is, oh, I'm starting off at zero, well, then you undercharge for your coaching prices. So I would say right off the bat, don't do freebies. Don't do one session, right? The biggest mistake I see many coaches do, they do one session at a time. I don't do it, right? If you, if you, if you, there's not a, a, a commitment from the, from, the, from the person, from the prospect, from the person that I need to coach, a business owner, entrepreneur, I won't do it because I don't do onesies, right? I call them onesies. I'm not in a business for onesies, right? You're never going to become successful doing a onesie. So that's the first thing I would tell them. The second thing I would do is this. You definitely got to hire a coach or a mentor that you're going to have to pay for because when people pay, Stacy. They pay attention, right? That's the millionaire yeah. mind. Millionaires understand that when you pay, you pay attention. And what helped me, with, because when I started my business, I was a straight up motivational speaker. But I didn't, I understood business, but I didn't understand the speaking business world. And to understand it, I, right off the back, I hired two different coaches. I worked with one for about three months, the other one for about another three months. But what that allowed me to do, it collapsed the time of my learning cycle. So instead of getting frustrated and going through the process of learning how to become a speaker in the speaking world, right, to get paid because I wanted to become a paid speaker, right, it would have taken me probably by myself maybe three or four years. I collapsed that within about a, a, a six-month time. And within, right, the first year we came out, I was making $100,000 as a paid professional speaker. And because I collapsed the time because I made that. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. This is the biggest mistake, right, because they still think like the employee, the coach does. I said, I can't afford it. And I almost didn't go to the first conferences that I needed to go to when my life changed, when I went to the, to the JMT certification. I really couldn't because my wife had double mastectomy. She was depressed, breast cancer. So many of us as a young business owner, as a young coach, we allow our circumstances and our situations to keep us from really investing in ourselves because we think that I can't afford it. I can't do this. It's too much. And then it's the second mistake we make, right? When it comes to that mindset is, is that we think we're going to make a one-time investment of $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. Some reason they believe that after that, they're, they're, they're set for the rest of their life. No, right? Like you're going to have to invest. I've invested almost $300,000 in myself. That's why we're making the revenue, the millions that we do, because I've invested that money. But you, it's not going to be a one-time just, here, let me pay for this one program I'm done or one-time conference I'm done. No, it, does, it doesn't work that way because- I've learned the way I met you by investing and in being in communities and conferences, right? I would have never met you if I wouldn't have invested in myself. Look at the opportunity I would have missed on just to spend time with you on your amazing show. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's an, an unending process. It needs to always be going. We need to always be growing. That's fast. That's so true. It's so true. <laughs> yes. But, but in your mind, think about this. When if somebody goes to college, just say that they, they choose the college route. Right now, I think my son just graduated in, in December this past year. I can say this because it's pretty accurate numbers. In San Antonio, he went to Texas State. He paid about, I think, I think why well, paid about $120,000 for, for a four and a half year degree. $120,000. That's just to get a degree. And that's no guarantee. So yes. what, makes you think, what makes you think you're going to start a business investing two or three thousand and you're going to make hundreds of thousands it doesn't work that way but in in somehow we try to convince ourselves that that's the reason no like it, it this isn't it doesn't work and another another analogy i'll give you is this another example is when you go into buy a mcdonald's just just to use the name mcdonald's it's over a million dollars before you sell one french fry one happy meal a million dollars stacy so what makes us think as a young entrepreneur as a coach as a small business owner that we're going to make a one-time investment of a thousand, two thousand, we'll just say $10,000 and then we're done. No, it's a commitment, long game. You have to think long-term in this. 
Exactly. Exactly. Totally. I totally agree. And you mentioned just um, briefly about your wife. Kind of tell us about your nonprofit and kind of maybe a, a little bit about your story with that, how you created that to help women who have dealt with breast cancer. Yeah. First of all, I want to say is in, when adversities come, a problem comes, stop looking at it as a problem, as a, as a, as a sore. When something comes into your life, it's to teach you a lesson. And when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, we never played the victim. In 2017, she got the call. Our life was turned upside down and quickly we had to land on our feet. But I love what my wife said, Stacy. She said, I'm not gonna play the victim. She never said why. She says what she would say, why not me? And that gave me the confidence to just do and start the business. Cause literally she was diagnosed double mastectomy within a couple of months. And I resigned to take care of her because she got depressed on me in, in November of 2017. So I left my position, right? Making good money. We were making, I mean, the multiple six figures. But I say that to you because so many times we think because we're making 50, 60, 100,000, even that, that, oh, I can't leave my job because no, it's my family. No, like sometimes you got to leave that comfort zone of that guaranteed income. And believe me, I mean, walking away from multiple six figures is not easy in the automotive industry. But I was willing to bet on myself because God put this idea. I want you to go speak to the world and help them. And I was crazy enough to believe in myself. And because I was crazy enough to believe in myself, I didn't make any excuses, right? I had to succeed. Why? Because my wife just had a double mastectomy. So in that journey, as we started this, like I said, we, we my first year in, in business, we made over 100000 And then people started asking for help and it was, it was amazing just what transpired. And then they're like, well, my wife goes, well, what can we do for women? And that's when we started the Mighty Strong Foundation. Shortly after that, every October now, this year will be October 28, 2023. We're having our Finding Your Inner Beauty Women's Conference. And it's grown generously, right? It's, it's grown by the grace of God. Even during COVID, we had our conference. People came in from all over the country in 2020, October of 2020, and we had like about a hundred women here and it was, it was amazing, wow. but we raised the money during October to give back to women. Right. Because one thing that happened was even though we, my wife had insurance at work, the co-pays of, 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 of radiation of medicines, we were spending probably about close to $2,000 a month of just money out of pocket besides the insurance that was paying for that. So there was no nonprofit to help at that moment. So what we decided was, right, well, after 90 days, I already lost the car, already lost. I mean, you're already late. It doesn't matter within 90 days. So what we do at the Mighty Strong Foundation, me and my wife, is we help women within seven to 10 business days. If you need groceries, if you need $100 for gas, if you need a, a co-pay for chemotherapy, we're right there. And we're, we're meeting you right there at that instant moment where it can get overwhelming because if it wasn't for, for just the grace of God that we had each other and people surrounded us to help us. I don't know what we would have done sometimes because those co-pays can add up pretty quick. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's such a heartwarming story. Oh, oh, what you've gone through and then how you turned it around and how you've been able to help other people and the way you've done it. So grace, so graciously, so kind. Oh, I love that. Oh, that warms my heart. Thank you for sharing that. Well, the oh, Mighty Strong Foundation would have never been born if my wife wouldn't have gone through that. And and, and yeah. I want to, somebody needs to hear this and in, in, in listening to this and watching us right now is that you never understand why something happens in that immediate moment in your life, in your business, why maybe that customer let you go or why that partner betrayed you. But it's all a lesson to make you better in your bigger scheme of things because we don't see three or four years down the road. I look back now and I'm like, that was a blessing to make us stronger, to make us mentally tougher, to be more compassionate to people because mm -hmm. we take so many things for granted. There was so many lessons in that whole experience Stacy that so many times as young business owners or young entrepreneurs we play the victim and then we it becomes bitterness and resentment in our hearts and then it keeps our business from growing because we don't realize we've contaminated ourselves because of something that happened six months ago a year ago and we don't release it and that's why so many small businesses and entrepreneurs they, they self-sabotage themselves yeah yeah yes yes so what do you, what do you love about what you do? What are you, what are, what keeps you going on a day-to-day -day basis when things get really busy or really challenging? Like what, what do you love? 
like today. <laughs> you know, the, the, the truth is seeing people succeed and, and caring about people. I, I think for me, growing up here in San Antonio and just really not having a pathway to be successful, right? I was never told, go make something of yourself, Daniel. Go, go, go to college. I was never told that. So when I work one-on-one -on -one with the client and we do we go through the coaching, whether they come to one of our speaking academies, a great example is Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard came to Sticker Shock two years ago. He was doing onesies and twosies, speaking every once in a while, making 500 bucks here. And I'm like, you need to come to Sticker Shock. It's going to help you. He didn't want to come. He went to a different conference. He goes, no, I'm good. His publisher said, if you don't go see Daniel, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to cut you, right? He was joking <laughs> with them, but he showed up. And the Google review that he gave us, he goes, my life changed, Daniel. Like, because we're not one of, we, when you come to Sticker Shock, we don't give you a third of the program. And okay, now you got to, you got to upgrade to the next program. We don't do that. When you come to Sticker Shock, we lay it all out. Oh, we, teach you how, we teach you how to build a speaking business. Tony Pollard, after he left Sticker Shock, from one September to the next September, he made over $70,000 as a speaker. Wow. He was ecstatic. He called me. Probably about four months ago, Daniel, I just got two $5,000 paid speaking gigs within two days. He was, he was amazing. So it's one thing when we succeed, but what keeps me going is who's the next Tony Potter that I can help? Who's the next speaker that we're going to help elevate? Who's the next business owner that we're going to take from 40,000 to 120,000? What's the next business that we're going to take from losing a million dollars to earning a million dollars? Because I've been blessed with the capabilities, right? I'm a, I am started off as a solo entrepreneur, so I know how to build that up because I've done it. But also, since I ran multi-million dollar organizations, I can go into a legitimate brick and mortar business with 50 to 100 employees and say, okay, this is what I see. We got to tweak yes. this. And I've taken a business that was losing a million dollars in the, in the, I mean, literally in the red, within a year and two months, they had a $2 million swing. Now they were in a, a million dollars in the black. So we have the experience in all this. So we're legitimate business coach where we don't just say that like right we don't just put a website and okay i'm a, no like we help people and businesses and teams and leadership because by god's grace i've been one of the top corporate trainers here in in texas now and i love it congratulations on that that's so awesome okay so we talked about what you love now tell us about what the hardest part what's the hardest part of your coaching experience keep it going i and and what i mean by that is by God's grace, when, when, when we developed and created our Millionaire Mind program, the book, we just launched our audio book, and we have our online program, we have the Millionaire Mind Boot Camp. When you have so much success like you've never had before, it's easy to get lazy, and you mm -hmm. get complacent, and you're content, and we all know, right, when you get content, you, you stop growing. So for me, it's really just challenging myself to realize that I got to be a professional about this, right? Amateurs allow their feelings to control them. Amateurs stop. A professional knows it takes one more set, one more rep. They know they got to push themselves. And I, I'll be honest with you. There was, a, there was a time in 2021 where we had an event with Floyd Mayweather. We were in, in Miami, amazing, amazing opportunity that came up. We were on this, on this yacht. And we were there and this gentleman, I was like, you know, I'm going to buy me a house like that, right? We were in the Miami Bay area, the, the Bay there. They were showing us, right? This is a uh, Scarface, the movie where they filmed the movie. And it was, it was an amazing time. The house, two down, two houses from him, the mansion said, I'm going to buy that house. I want a house like that. And the guy's like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, be I I'm being serious, right? I'm being totally serious. I went back to the hotel. I was looking at the pictures. And I didn't realize how complacent I had gotten at that moment. My cheeks were chubby. I had gained a little bit of weight. Seriously. But this is a thing, Stacy. I was going to the gym. But I was just going through the motions. So I said this. If I'm going through the motions in my workout, I'm going through the motions in some part of my business. I just can't see it. Mm. I got on the phone that next day. I caught Reggie, my trainer now, I said, look, dude, you've been wanting to train me for the last two years. I need you at my house Monday. If not, I'm going to hire somebody else. He goes, what? I go, yeah, I need you at my house because I'm, I'm taking shortcuts in my workouts. I'm taking shortcuts in my business. Hiring Reggie as my personal trainer was one of the best decisions I ever made. Not only did I get fit again, but 
We doubled in 2022, right? I hired them in November of 2021. We doubled in 2022 because of the fact that I was pushed physically. So and mentally I was pushed. I had a bigger, my capacity expanded. Right now we're on our way to have a record-breaking 2023. We're doubling again. And I say that because it just shows that health is important too. Your, your mental capacity is important. If you're not taking care of that. And I, I didn't realize how lazy I got. And like what you said, when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. <laughs> nice. So yeah. It's just, it's just, it, it's, it's success can do that to you sometimes. And I don't care who you are, but if you get complacent and you plateau, we all need a spark. We all need something that's going to juice us up. And for everybody, it's something different, but I'll, I'll tell you that it's, it's, people don't realize it, that when you have more success than you've ever had, it, it's easy to fall into that trap. Ah, you know what? I'll take it. Cause you know what? The guy behind you, the gal behind you, she's hungry. And she's going to surpass you. And you know what my goal is? I'm going to say it here on your show. In three years, I'm going to be the number one motivational speaker in the world. Watch. Nice. Mark my words. I, I got a poster. I'm going to show you my poster. Look. Number one oh. motivational speaker in the world, Daniel. Oh, you got it. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. I, I see the vision. I taste the vision. I talk about it. And I don't, I don't do it in an arrogant way, but. So many people are scared to share their dream with the world because of what the world might say. Who cares? That's my dream. That's and awesome. you, what you talk about in business, I want your audience to hear this. What you talk about in business, you bring about. What you talk about, you bring about. Yeah. 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 I believe it. I know it. That's awesome. I love it. Your your vision board is a whole poster. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> Yes. And you see that every day and you're like, yes, that's me. That is me. Oh, so good. And a finite time frame and clear, clear goal. That's just, that's how it works. That's how you do it. I love it. Yeah. You're, you're and, showing and, and, us. Yes. And, and the thing is, this is people say, well, you paid a hundred dollars for that board. That's a lot of money for my dream. A hundred dollars. Like if that's, <laughs> the way you, if that's the way you think I can't help you. <laughs> right. But, but, but some, some business owners, some entrepreneurs, that's the mindset they have. And that's what we break yeah. up. That's what we, that's what we deliver them from is from that mindset to really uh, and yes. believe bigger. So that's what I love about I love business coaching is really helping them, right. Develop the millionaire mind. So I, I love that. That's awesome. That's so good. It's so good. Okay. So here's a crazy question. What unusual habit or absurd thing do you love? Like what's something kind of quirky about you? Quirky. Man, you know, that's a good question. So I'll, I'll say this, right? Just, I like being silly with my wife. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll just be silly and we'll start doing like a finger dance. And where they're, <laughs> when we first met, we would do a finger dance and there'll be a song playing, right? When we're in the pool in the backyard, a, a song will play. I'm like, hon, let's dance. And she already <laughs> knows. So it's like, we don't get up and dance. We'll get up and we'll do like a slow dance. And it's just something silly Aww. to do. Because sometimes in business and in life, most people forget to have fun, Stacy. And I'm a person who loves to have fun because I believe that humor and laughter is good for the soul. So it's doing the finger dancing. <laughs> I, love it. That's so good. I love it. It's adorable. It is. It fits the question absolutely perfectly and gets helps <laughs> get to know you. It's so good. Thank you. Okay. So next question is over the last five years, what new belief, behavior, or habit has improved your life? The fact that I can be a millionaire and a multimillionaire. I think the fact that really believing that for myself, when I wrote the book, uh, I felt the belief was this, I wasn't smart enough. Who am I to write a book on the makings of a millionaire mind? Who, who is Daniel Gomez? And I even self-sabotaged myself. I stopped writing the book probably for about four months. And I'll never forget, my wife came to me one morning. She goes, I was in prayer and God says, you need to finish your book. And I was like, okay, I'll start in a couple of months, right? I had started writing the book, but just the whole way it was going was a wrong. I just, it just didn't feel right. So I chunked the whole manuscript. She came back two months later. She goes, no, God's not asking you. He's saying you need to finish the book. He's telling you that. And I really took that to heart. So the fact that I changed the belief that I, I was worthy and deserving enough to write a book on the makings of a millionaire mind. Imagine all the people that we've, we've sold thousands and thousands of copies. We just released the Audible. How selfish would it be if I wouldn't have written this book? Mm, so yeah. I want to, I want to say this with that for your audience here. You're never going to receive what you don't deserve. You're worthy of. You're never going to receive what you don't 
think and, and that you that you're deserving of it if you don't believe you're deserving of it you're never going to receive it yeah yeah oh that's so powerful that's so powerful my audience needed to hear that today thank you <laughs> if you really don't think good. you're deserving of being a millionaire you're never going to be of it if you don't think you're deserving of having a successful business even making a hundred thousand for those that are getting their first hundred k you're never going to do if you don't think you're deserving of it and the yeah. sad part of it is many people don't de- think they deserve it exactly exactly that's so powerful yes yes okay so we're going to have a couple more questions the next one is what investment have do you feel like has made the most benefit for you uh, in your life i think the first one that i said um i was so scared yes wasn't working didn't have any money and uh I saw this thing. I knew I needed to go. I need, I needed something. I didn't know what it was. And I saw the advertising for JMT for John Maxwell team. And even though I, I didn't really get what I was looking for, the fact that I was introduced to 2000 positive people that thought like me and I met my, this was a more impactful than actually the speaker lane that I went for was I met an author for the first time. They didn't know he wasn't a big author. He was just an author. I said, how awesome is it? to meet an author, right? Like you you wrote a, like I would, I had at that moment, I had never even thought of writing a book. I wouldn't even have dreamed of it, but just being in that environment in such a bigger room. And it was just so impactful because I literally, it was, it was like a whole, the, the, the ticket was like 4,000. The flight in the hotel was another thousand, $5,000. And I didn't have the money, but I was, I was so scared to bet on myself. But if I wouldn't have taken that leap initially, and spent that 5000 I would have never came back with the dream of being an author. And I would have never written our first book, You Were Born to Fly, which I have right here, right? We've sold thousands and thousands of this copy. But this was this is what gave us the launching pad because this became our first program that we ever sold. And it opened the door to train the United States Air Force. So I would wow. have never trained the United States Air Force if it wasn't for making that investment. Scared. I was scared. But I still did it. I, I, I Could I have afforded it? Maybe, maybe not. In my mind, I couldn't have, but I still did it anyways. Mm-hmm. And because I bet on myself on $5,000, I said, I know in my heart and my mind, I can make that money somewhere else. And so many people don't have that confidence within themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You did it. You did it. And it changed yeah. everything. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, yes. so good. Okay. So our last question is my favorite question. I always end with it is if you could have a gigantic billboard with anything on it to impact the world in a positive way, what would you put on your billboard? You matter. Oh, you matter. that's so good. You matter. Like people need to understand that they matter, right? I would have three affirmations. I would have a picture of myself like in the back and it would say, you matter, you're important, you're necessary. And if no one's ever told you they believe in you, this is Daniel Gomez Inspire saying, I believe in you. That'd be my <laughs> billboard, right? Because people don't think they matter. They don't think yep. they're important. They don't think they're necessary. And most of us, we don't believe in ourselves the way we should. So that would be my billboard for you. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Success in Business. I have loved interviewing you. It's been so much fun. Yeah. And what I want to do for your audience, right? I want them to text the word millionaire, right? The word millionaire, text to 210-942-5059. Text the word millionaire to 210-942-5059. And we're going to send you millionaire affirmations, inspirational quotes, just to really inspire you because sometimes during the week, we need that little inspiration for ourselves, Stacy. And you know what? I want to say again, from my bottom of my heart, I love your smile. I love your energy. And thank you so much for having me on this amazing show. Thank you. And thanks to all our listeners and take care, everyone. <laughs>